much. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, seven minutes. Uh, LDCs uh, have always been uh, bombarded uh, with all kinds of advices. And you look at the Brussels plan of action, it uh, can feel some books on the manual on how to develop LDCs. Uh, and yet, LDCs, uh, in spite of having done, I would say, almost all the right things, but obtained all the wrong results. Uh, LDCs, on average, have been growing twice uh, in the last decade compared to the decade before. 7% uh, compared to 3 and 4%. LDCs have been successfully mobilizing foreign direct investment, increased by 10 to 14% per year. LDCs have been exporting well uh, in terms of growth. What has gone wrong, actually? LDCs some time ago, also in the 70s and 80s, because of the Structural Adjustment Program, have been told to rely on the market forces. Uh, government should go and do something on the social areas, leave the economic adjustment to the market forces. Market will tell you everything about price and development. And markets have always, not always been right, many times been wrong on the pricing and also most of the time wrong on development. So, so in the 80s, most of the sub-Saharan economies were net food exporters. After having done the structural adjustment, now they are some of the world's largest food importers for the last couple of decades. So that is what they've done right and the wrong result. And right. They have opened up their economies. LDCs have opened up their economies, according to all of us, economies and accommodations, open up, open up, liberalize, and see what happened to them uh, during the grand recession, the great recession in the last couple of years. Those who have opened up the most have been actually most damaged by the recession. So again, is that uh, something that they should deserve? FDI inflows going uh, in big numbers into the LDCs, 14% increase in the last couple of years, but they have all gone into extractive industries all to an extractive industry, mining, energy. Yeah, it didn't help to create jobs. It didn't help with the technology transfer. It didn't help even to leave uh, commensurate of, of uh, yeah, appropriate chairs or benefits for the, for the participating LDCs. And carbon emission, LDCs uh, are responsible for probably less than 1% of the global carbon emission, and yet they are going under uh, because of the climate change, desertification, droughts, floods, rising of the water. I was meeting with some of the leaders during the Pacific Island meeting, and they were telling us that we used to have our house by the beach. Now half of our houses stand under, under the water by the beach, under the water. And they have to spend much more money in building roads that are further up the hills. Cost much more. And so, you know, climate change really has quite devastating effects on, on the LDC season, especially those small island uh, the open states. So this is what happened to them, I mean, in spite of all the, the right things that they've been doing. Uh, challenges. Challenges. Uh, we try to explain why things that uh, are supposed to have happened to them have not happened. We try to, as good economists used to do, I mean, we try to reason with hindsight, look backward and see what happened yesterday or day before yesterday and try to justify what we did. And so we said all these good advices have not been followed or they followed uh, with not really the right kind of uh, setup and framework. First one is that governance. We seem to say all the bad things about the governance or lack of governance in the LDCs. They don't have the institutional framework, administrative uh, is cumbersome, uh, corruption, uh, all sorts of things. So lack of governance. Lack of uh, value addition, uh, no, no diversification. 
no effort at diversification. If you look at the trade regime, how can, how can countries diversify when they produce commodities, they can sell at a certain level of tariffs, protection. When they process the commodities, the tariff protection gone up 100%. Or even more than that. So they cannot. And, and we said they didn't do value addition and diversification. We said they didn't do it, LDCs didn't do enough infrastructure. And after all, we all know about infrastructure investment. They all need it. How come they cannot do it? They cannot raise the finance. They, they cannot raise the finance. They don't know much about public private sector partnership and how to make it work to raise some bonds or to attract uh, uh, private sector in doing this sort of business. Food insecurity. It's getting worse and worse. Uh, how to go back into the kind of, of a government involved arrangement as they used to do in the past when they have commodity uh, committee boards and they have cooperatives, they have subsidies, like Malawi has been doing. Malawi has been doing this, subsidizing fertilizers so that they can maintain some of their food, food production. And some countries like uh, Ghana, some successful countries have been maintaining uh, their food security by applying government intervention, government support. Rising poverty level. In spite of all the uh, uh, rise of uh, the, the rise of income, rise of uh, the GDP, uh, rise of uh, increasing inflows of FDIs. Uh, poverty level has not increased, and uh, with one recession like this, one vulnerability is so great. During this last re recession, uh, tens of millions of, 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 of poor people have been added to the, the existing high level of, of uh, people living under the poverty line. Unemployment, joblessness, growth didn't bring jobs. Growth is needed, of course, to provide for all the revenues and, and, and resources, but growth and job creation is not always automatic. So these are all challenges. I mean, I just cite a few that are known to all of you. And just to end uh, in the next uh, one minute uh, by saying, uh, then what can we do? Because all this have been discussed. I remember the Brussels meeting uh, 10 years ago. And uh, at that time, I wasn't an attard. But uh, now, <laughs> now I have more reasons to be more concerned. A few points, five points quickly, Mr. Chairman, uh, and then I will finish. Uh, we think we have to do things differently. What, what, what I call, uh, with, with Ankat's approach at the moment, we have to avoid what has been called, what has been, we call it, finance-led globalization into more development-led globalization. It's not the dollar and cent that, that we need all the time when we produce. We need the content. We need, we need development state development governance to be, to be put in place. We need governments who understand how to devise their macroeconomic policies, not for the sake of price stability. What is price stability for LDCs that cannot sell their products, that cannot feed their people, that cannot mobilize investment, and not have banks that can lend money to the people? What is a price stability for? So, uh, first of all, uh, we need a balance role of the state and the market. This is a long discussion, but I leave it with you that we need development governance, we need the markets, but the two will have to have balance. And so I'm so pleased that this is the first time here in this LDC4 conference that we have a parallel session between, between the governments, the officials, delegations, and also the private sector. We badly need the private sector to be part of our solution because if you look backwards, you know, into the past challenges in the past decades, private sector didn't have much of a role. Entrepreneurs in the LDCs are not really, uh, they, they have scarce material, no entrepreneurs. Second point, uh, sexual policies. We cannot, we cannot allow the criticism on the sexual policies to go on. And sexual, sexual policies, and I have been spending some time at the WTO before also, sexual policies do not always mean protectionism. Because if you just keep on opening up without looking left or right, blindly opening up will land you into uh, dislocation, deindustrialization, uh, what all sorts of things that would help uh, to create problems even more. And some countries uh, actually ended up being highly indebted because of the of the of the imbalances, uh, deficits in their current accounts. So again, sectoral policies in all major three areas. This is what we agree under the UN system, the, the cluster that we operate under, agriculture, industry, and services. 
agriculture, we emphasize definitely the role of government, role of technology, infrastructure in there. Industrialization, we, we emphasize particularly processing, value addition. On services, we emphasize many sectors, uh, water management, communication road, IT, energy, financial services, health and education. And particularly today, I'm so pleased, I've been involved with three sessions on, on tourism. The tourism is a great, is a great sector. It has great linkages, multiplier effect, and it has, it has uh, uh, been uh, uh, helpful in, 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 in mobilizing a lot of, of investment and, and, and foreign, foreign exchange. Trade policies. Trade policies uh, as being negotiated under the WTO can help to make or break the LDCs. Uh, we ask for flexibility for LDCs. We ask for policy space for LDCs. We ask for spatial and differential treatment for LDCs. We ask for spatial facilities for LDCs to exceed the WTO. We ask for spatial treatment on the transfer of technology, Article 66.2 in the TRIPS. We ask for a lot of these things, not yet uh, delivered. The thing that is being delivered is just commitment, commitment that until the end of the round, Cotton will be delivered until the end of the round. The duty-free, quota-free things, 100% will be delivered. Everything will depend on the end of the round. the end of the round, it's not coming soon. Or it's not coming. Uh, so I don't want to comment on that. Yes, I finish. Uh, we, we need to have participation of the international community. Uh, they are helpful with all the A's and transfer of technology. What we are asking for is not only for the commitments on financial transfer, but on the composition of the financial transfer to be addressing the issues that are confronting the LDCs, which is job creation, capacity building, transfer technology. But what we see from the ODAs is that the allocation has been tilting away from economic productive sectors into more socially oriented sectors. Nothing wrong with social sectors and investment. But if you don't have capacity to, to produce, to have value added, to have jobs, you cannot end up getting rid of, of unemployment and poverty. Thank you very much. Thank you, Zapraji. Uh, Although we have different concepts of one minute, uh, uh, it, it was very, very exciting and very interesting. Thank you very much. Uh, now, Sir Richard Jolly. Well, I mean, here, here it's changed again. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I think I will switch over to this. Uh, you can do. I'm, I'm ready. But uh, please, yes. Well, I want to begin by saying I'm glad to be here with uh, Secretary General Superchai and Patrick Deal. I'm not sure how many people realize that over the 40 years that the least developed countries have been the marginalized group in the country, in the world. The definition of uh, least developed countries has broadened and I think deepened very, very effectively. And I really pay tri tribute to Patrick and uh, some of his colleagues on the committee on what used to be the Committee on Development Planning, started by Jan Tinbergen and then continued with many other uh, distinguished in 